right, we're back. Thank you so much for your patience. We are now on to public comments on action items. So those are things that we will be voting on this evening. I have one green card up here. Um, this is for a non-action item. Is there anyone who would like to speak to the board this evening on action items? These are things that we would vote on. Okay, excellent, thank you everyone. Colleagues, consent agenda. Unless there are objections this evening, the consent agenda is approved as presented. Okay. Very good. All right, colleagues, moving on now to information items. Our first information item this evening is a Title IX policy updates. So as you know, NEOLA has issued a special update regarding the recent changes to the Title IX regulations. The law requires that school districts have new and revised policies in place by August 1st, 2024. In June of 2024, the special update was released to include a new policy, policy 2264, and revisions to an existing policy, policy 2266. Policy 2264 addresses the new 2024 Title IX regulations. Policy 2266, was originally adopted to address the 2020 Title IX regulations. OCR announced when it was released the 2024 regulations that any reports, quote unquote reports, or quote unquote formal complaints involving allegations of sex-based harassment that involved conduct alleged to have occurred prior to 20, August 1st, 2024, which was the effective date of the 2024 regulations, must be processed in accordance with the 2029 Title IX regulations. So revising our existing policy will address this legal requirement. Policy updates have been prepared and reviewed by NEOLA's legal counsel to guarantee statutory compliance. Further, these policies have been reviewed by our administration, including our Title IX coordinators, to ensure consistency with compliance and practice. Further, members of the board received copies in advance uh, for review. That's in our packet this evening. You'll see all the changes um, in our packet. So to meet the August 1st, 2024 deadline, the Board of Education will be asked to approve the following policies this evening under new business. Policy 2264, non-discrimination on the basis of sex in education programs or activities and policy 2266, non-discrimination on the basis of sex in education programs or activities. So again, these are updates to policy to bring us in compliance with new regulation and law. Um, all of those are detailed, all the revisions are detailed in our packet. Um, do we have any questions this evening for our Title IX coordinator, Nadine Milestan? Yeah, Member Patricia, please. Seeing how, you probably stay right there. Uh, seeing how it's pretty much federal and state rules and laws, we kind of have to do this, right? Because again, it's we're, we're getting it tonight and we're voting on it tonight, which I don't like to do, but it's kind of like the law. It is the law. It's not kind of like it is. <laughs> <laughs> that takes all the fun out of it. Like, oh, we have to do this. Okay, thanks. Thank you. That's all I had. Thank you, Member Patricia. Are there any other comments or questions? Thank you, everyone. Okay, colleagues, moving on now to our second agenda, uh, information item this evening, our Leggett Purchase Agreement. Um, we have Assistant Superintendent Elka up here to field any questions. Um, we've, been, we've talked a little bit about this. Do we have any questions regarding the Leggett Purchase Agreement? All kinds, but it's, until I have a full board, I can't really have all the different questions. So okay. We'll okay. Just hold off till then. Remember, Ryan, are you good? I'm okay. Okay. Then we'll get Sandy. Thank you. Uh, Sandy, we'll keep you up there though, because we have our next information item is our Honor Health Agreement. So I don't know if you wanted to bring us up to date here. Yes. Thank you very much. I'm going to be joined by Jeff Cook. He is the Chief of Community Services for Honor Community Health. 
and he's going to help me ho hopefully answer some questions I'm sure you'll have once we go through this. Mr. Welcome. <clears throat> So the Honor Community Health is part of the Oakland Integrated Healthcare Network, which has run the Waterford Durant Teen Health Center since 2011. The clinic itself has been operating for approximately 20 years in total, serving the students of Waterford schools from years three to 21 and up to 26 for our special ed students. Since the first clinic was established, we've added Waterford Mason and Children's Village's locations as well. Um, our current agreement with Honor Health needs to be renewed, and we have our attorney reviewing the agreement, so we, you do not have that available quite yet. Um, we are looking for about another four years of agreement. Um, the district provides space for the operations and a liaison with, from the district, but no other monetary support. Um, Honor Health staffs a nurse practitioner, a medical assistant, and a behavioral health clinician um, for these um, centers. Um, Health, Honor Health also offers an array of services for our students and their families, from mental health evaluation and therapy to physical exams to immunization. Um, so it is part of the community. They do a good job with community outreach um, and having community advisory. So we have people on an advisory committee that helps um, direct what we want with the services and how we want to reach out to the students. We also have a youth advisory committee that, that's made up Durant students that also gives us insight into what they want from that committee. Um, I have Jeff here if you have questions about um, the program, the services. Um, a couple years ago I might want to note is um, for security reasons, um, we have made sure that this is only for our students and family. Um, after COVID, because some of the numbers went down for obvious reasons, we did expand it a little to have people in the community come in who might not have been students. Um, but um, a couple years ago, for security purposes, we, we shut that down. They do have a secured entrance, so it's not like anybody can walk in there, but this made us feel a little bit better that um, only students were coming in, so we have a little bit more control over who's there as well. Alex, what comments or questions? Mr. Wagner, please. <clears throat> Hi. Oh, gosh, that was loud. <laughs> so right now we have the three facilities between Children's Village, Mason, and Durant. So do we have a nurse practitioner that floats between the three? No, we have one designated nurse practitioner f just for Durant. Okay. And one uh, nurse practitioner for Children's Village. And then at Mason, it's a little different model. We have a full-time behavioral health clinician, master level, just okay. providing mental health. Um, services to those students. Okay, <clears throat> but it's for any student. So a student from a different building could come over there to Mason for those services. They, they could. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, the new agreement will be four years, I, I believe you said. Uh, that hasn't come before us yet, but the four-year agreement is the plan. Correct. It's a. It's a pretty simple agreement, but we have three agreements that we put into one because when we had the other. Uh, locations, it sort of just added to it. So we're trying to just put them together. But again, the, the point is, is that they have to have insurance, they have to be staffed, we just offer them space. And so that that is really the extent of ours along with the liaison. Um, but we're really helping them um, just to have that as a service for our students. So it doesn't cost us that out of this budget or that budget? Or Correct. Correct. So, um, you know, we don't do, they do want utilities. More? So do they want more room? Can we, they, if you bring, you know, we give them more room, they'll bring more nurses in? Or? So we have talked about that because there are grants from the state, okay. um, and we've had that conversation. Mm -hmm. um, we're doing a few things with Durant with moving a few classrooms around. It, we may have room, but we haven't got into that. But we do have an opportunity if we want to do that to extend it. The grants would pay for that um, work on our building. I like that. <laughs> you come all the way in, I have to ask something. That's right. So in terms of our timeline, um, what, what, what is our timeline? Here? So we would like to have it approved either at 8-1 or 8-18. And we would give, as soon as the attorney is done reviewing it, which I'm hoping for one more week, then we just go ahead and send it to you early so you can review it. It's um, actually a pretty simple agreement. It's, you know, it's not one of those very complicated. It's just making sure that they know they're responsible for everything that happens in there. We're just responsible to give them space um, for that um, service. So do you have a sense uh, of, of 
any, are there any substantial changes to the agreement? No, we really just wanted to put it in one agreement. Like I said, we had different agreements because okay, Durant started Mason and then, yeah, so it's just really in one agreement. It just talks about the fact that they run it, they do the services, we provide the, um, the room and they just present to our students, so. Okay. Any other questions here? Mr. Cook, thank you for joining us this evening, and I imagine we'll see, we'll see you again soon, I imagine. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Andrew. Okay. Colleagues, we're going to move on now to new business, and uh, as everyone will see, and for folks following along at home, this is a lot of our, our annual summer housekeeping, um, updating or approving much of our memberships and, uh, and the like. So... Um, we're going to turn it over first to Acting Secretary Joslyn. Superintendent's Recommendation 1-24-25, Designate Area Newspaper to Publish Official Board Notices. It is recommended that the Board of Education designate the Oakland Press for publication of legal notices for the 2024-2025 school year. I so move. Support. Thank you. Motion has been moved and supported. Any comments or questions? All those in favor, please sing that fire by raising your hand. Thank you, the motion carries 4-0. Member Joslyn. Superintendent's recommendation 2-24-25, appointment of legal counsel. It is recommended that the Board of Education hereby recognize and appoint the following law firms as 2024-2025 approved legal counsel for the Waterford School District to be utilized as determined by the superintendent of schools or designee. Miller Johnson, Thrun Law Firm, Clark Hill, Richard E. Krupnik, PLC. I so move. Support. Thank you. The motion for the appointment of legal counsel has been moved and supported. Comments or questions, please? Very good. All those in favor, please sign the five raising your hand. Thank you. The motion carries 4 0. Member Joslin? Superintendent's recommendation 3 24 25. Resolution, appointment of superintendent or designee to represent the Board of Education in all elections. Whereas the school code of 1976, as amended, provides that the secretary of a school district, a local act district, or an intermediate school district shall be the chief election officer of the respective district with authority to delegate election duties to a member of the district's administrative staff. Be it resolved that the Board of Education hereby appoints Scott A. Lindbergh, Superintendent of Schools, and his designee, Sandra Elka, Assistant Superintendent, Business and Operations, to represent the Board in all elections. Be it further resolved that the appointees have taken the official constitutional oath of office to affirm that they will faithfully discharge the election duties of the Secretary of the Waterford School District Board of Education in all school district elections, to the best of their ability. I so move. Support. Thank you, it's been moved and supported. Do we have any comments or questions here on this, resol this resolution? Okay, all those in favor, please send the five barriers in favor. Thank you, the motion carries for zero. Member Joslyn. Superintendent's recommendation 4-24-25 authorization to represent Waterford School District in property matters. It is recommended that the Board of Education authorize Sandra Elka, Assistant Superintendent, Business and Operations, to represent the Waterford School District Board of Education in all property matters for the 2024-2025 school year, enabling her to sign board approved purchase, sale and lease agreements on the board's behalf. I so move. Support. Thank you. It's been moved and supported. Comments or questions regarding the authorization to represent WSD in property matters? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Thank you. The motion carries 4-0. Member Joslyn? Superintendent's recommendation 5-24-25, school district legal reference note. This note is added or attached to the minutes of the July 18th, 2024 regular meeting of the Board of Education as a legal reference status of our school district. Legal name of school district, the Board of Education, Oakland County, DBA, Waterford School District. This district is a general power school district by operation of law. 
The Board of Education is comprised of seven members who are elected for terms of six years, members holding office on July 1st, 2024, and the expiration of their current terms are listed in the packet. Members of the Board of Education are elected in November, in the November election, even years, I so move. Support. Support. Thank you, it's been moved and supported. Any comments or questions? Just as a reminder for those who might be watching, um, again, this is relatively boilerplate stuff uh, that we have to re-up every year. So, okay, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Thank you so much. Motion carries for zero. Member Joslyn. Superintendent's recommendation 6-24-25, renewal of memberships. It is recommended that the Board of Education authorize the administration to renew Waterford School District memberships for the 2024-2025 school year in the following organizations. Metropolitan Detroit Bureau of School Studies Incorporated, Michigan Association of School Boards, Michigan Association of School Boards Legal Trust Fund, Michigan High School Athletic Association, Middle Cities Educational Management, Michigan Association of School Administrators, Waterford Area Chamber of Commerce. I so move. Support. Support. Thank you. Moved and supported. Any comments or questions? Really quick, a big shout out to the Michigan Association of School Boards. They've been um, uh, so valuable over these last five years of, as all school boards have navigated some pretty rough waters. So yeah. um, really, really thankful to be uh, part of their, their organization. So. Okay, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Thank you, motion carries for zero. Secretary Joslyn. Superintendent's recommendation 7-24-25, resolution designation of depositories. It is recommended that the board approve the resolution presented designating legal depositories of district money for the 2024-2025 school year. I so move. Support. The resolution has been moved and supported. Any comments or questions? Member Petrusha, please. Well, I have asked this before. We, we have a bunch of different banks. Why do we have a bunch of different banks? We have so much money, we just want to keep it everywhere. Not necessarily. Okay. Uh, many of these banks were from student activity funds for the buildings. So okay. they would pick a local branch that was close to the school, made it a lot easier for deposits and um, picking checks up and things like that. So, so that's where we, we have us for student activities. Okay. And, and then some of them are for bond, some of them are for investment, some of our uh, Fifth Third Bank is our main one, but some of the others do things like P cards and stuff like that, so. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, any other comments or questions? Okay, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Thank you, the motion carries for Zero. Member Joslyn. Superintendent's recommendation 8-24-25, summer tax collection, board resolution. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the summer tax collect collection resolution presented. I so move. Support. Support. Thank you, it's been moved and supported. Any comments or questions regarding the summer tax collection resolution? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Thank you, motion carries for zero. Member Joslyn. Superintendent's recommendation 9-24-25, meal prices 2024-2025 school year. The administration recommends that the Board of Education establish the following school meal prices for the 2024-2025 school year as presented with no increase. I so move. Support. Thank you, the motion has been moved and supported. Any comments or questions regarding meal prices for 24-25? Member Wagner, please. This is just if, if a student were to get um, an additional meal because we're, go are, isn't, didn't this, or we don't know for sure yet, do we? No, we are gonna continue universal okay. breakfast and lunch. We've always had breakfast, but we had lunch added uh, last year. And so if a student wants a second meal, yes, they would pay for that. And of course, adults pay for all of their right. meals, so yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah. Is the adult meal larger than the secondary meal? Does it cost more or uh, just because they're teachers or adults? They, they it's don't. usually about the same meal as what the kids do, yes. Well, but it should be the exact same. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> but I'm just thinking I'm gonna go in and say I'm a student. <laughs> <laughs> Never and mind, I, okay. And I would say good luck. <laughs> <laughs> 
Any other comments or questions regarding meal prices? Okay, all those in favor, please think of five raising your hand. Thank you, motion carries. Four zero. Member Johnson, keep up the good work. Hmm. <laughs> Superintendent's recommendation 10 24 25, Title IX policy updates. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following policy updates. Policy 2264, non discrimination on the basis of sex in education programs or activities, new 2024 regulations. And policy 2266, non discrimination on the basis of sex in education programs or activities, revised 2020 regulations. I so move. Support. Thank you. The motion has been moved and supported. Any comments or questions regarding our Title IX policy updates? Member Fisher. If these are laws we have to follow, why do we have to vote on it? Can we say no and break the law? What's, I, I don't <laughs> understand this. This is, no. <laughs> It, it, we don't have a choice. Nope. This is the law. You have to do it. Yep. Why would they allow us to vote on it? Uh, I could vote no. <laughs> Please don't. I know. Yeah, don't. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can screw with people tonight. <laughs> yeah. um, well, thank you to the team for, for reviewing this. Um, uh, yep. and Megan. Megan. Yep. yep. It's very tedious, so thank you <laughs> so much. All right, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. <laughs> Thank you, the motion carries 4-0. All right, let's move on now to uh, some administrative appointments. Member right. Jocelyn. Probably the most important recommendation in this entire packet. Superintendent's recommendation 11-24-25, administrative appointment. It is recommended that the Board of Education approve the following administrative contract changes and appointments for the 2024-2025 school year. Stephen Henning, Principal, Mason Middle School, 100% Administrator Contract, effective date July 22, 2024. Ann Cruz, Principal, Location, Durant High School, 100% Administrator Contract, effective date July 22, 2024. I so move. Support. Thank you. The motion has been moved and supported. Any comments or questions? Member Patricia, please. By some people moving buildings are going to crush families. So if I, you know, <laughs> heard a, I, I can make some families happy here <laughs> uh, because some are going to be crushed. I mean, it just, it's, we don't want to hold back our people, but it just, the, the, the school community and, and one school's losing a little bit. Uh, and I just, I, I feel bad when we have to do that, it's, you need a little bit of rain for flowers to grow. It's, you know, we move on, life goes on, and all these other wonderful things. But when you when you have good people and they move buildings, it, it just it's it's heartbreaking. It's sad. I feel bad. Well, we've got some good people. So yep. Any other comments or questions, Member Wagner? First, I would like to congratulate Ms. Cruz. Very we haven't voted on it yet. Oh, wait, oh, oh. The vote. Oh, gosh. Oh, that's right. So we'll do it. We'll do it after. We'll vote first. We'll vote first. How we're here tonight. Okay, sorry. Let's vote. Let's vote first. All right. All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. Thank you. The motion carries 4-0. Uh, and we're actually going to welcome Susan File on up to introduce. Jenna. Yes. Hi, Susan. Hi. Thank you for having me here tonight. And I'd like to first ask Ms. Cruz to come forward just to, um, <laughs> we just have to say um, a few things about um, Ann's leadership here in the district. She started with Waterford School District 24 years ago as a secondary teacher. Um, she has taken a tour of duty around the district, okay? She quickly moved into um, administrative and leadership roles um, after being at um, Mason as a teacher. And she served eight years in various secondary administrative roles um, across from Mott to Mason to Pierce. And then she also spent 11 years as an elementary principal, both at Houghton and most recently at Donaldson Hills. So as a district, um, we are very fortunate to have such incredible passion and um, dedication to our students um, and, and Anne's um, warrior for all children's mantra mm -hmm. um, coming to Durant. She's looking very forward to um, welcoming and 
and getting to know those students um, at Durant that were formerly her students at Donaldson. Yes, absolutely. It is a, it is a, you know, a, it's the motions the last three days. I, I hear you, Mr. Petrusha, that um, the families and staff and my phone, just in the text messages and the phone calls and the crying and the, I'm so happy for you. I'm so sad for us. Um, but honestly, a, a good leader leaves people in good positions, right? You have the tools that they need to move forward. And um, in the interview process with Durant, I asked the teachers what they wanted, you know, what they felt about their school and what they, you know, were really looking for. And they said, this is a magical place. And I said, I would love to be part of that magic. And, um, I'm, I'm just really to, to, you know, take the next step to go back to my secondary roots and really get those kids to the finish line. I live here in the community, you know, and like Susan said, I am a warrior for kids. Like, don't get in my way because, <laughs> you know, I'm going for it 100 percent. So um, I'm just very honored to serve in this position in another area in this district. So. Welcome in a new capacity. Yes. <laughs> yes. I just wanted to say congratulations. I'm excited. I, I do not doubt that you will bring your own magic to Durant because it is such a magical building. And, and I, I, can, I just foresee you doing phenomenal there. And I'm excited for you. So congratulations. Thank you so much. You mentioned you've been here 24 years. Mm -hmm. It seems like a long time, but I was here for a couple of years before you were hired. So it, it just, <laughs> wow. Uh, but again, I, I look forward to it because again, everything, everywhere you go, you do well. You, know, you, you, touch, you touch lives, make everything you know, better. So. And if they have issues somewhere, you're the type of person that reaches out and fixes those too. So mm -hmm. thank you for what you do. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, and then you're gonna, it's, uh, Durant is going to be so lucky to have you. And uh, speaking of a magical community, we know what you've done over at Donaldson. Yes. Um, what a wonderful, magical place that is. And yes. uh, we know that our, our central office staff and our, our community is going to have to find an administrator who's worthy of, of, <laughs> of that work and of that position. And so we're thankful for all that you've left over there, too. Yeah. Um, what well, you know what? I'm going to be watching them. I'm going to be All right. <laughs> there you go. Too. Just because I'm somewhere else doesn't, That's right. doesn't mean I'm going to be like not like, hey, come on. Oh. Let's go. Well, and we can't wait to hear about all the wonderful things at Durant. All right. And um, thank, thank you, you for your service. Yeah, you, you will you not so be much. disappointed. All right. Let's go. Thank you. Susan? And next I will ask Mr. Stephen Henning to come and have a seat at the podium. <laughs> At the table, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> the literally metaphorical yeah. seat of the yeah. table. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Steph, as he prefers to be called, um, brings to Waterford eight years of teaching experience. And his last four years have been that as an assistant um, principal at the Troy School District as an administrator. And we are very fortunate and lucky to be bringing Steph here. He is excited and he is um, ready to take this next leap as everyone from Troy School District tells us that he is ready for this leap as we've done extensive background checking on him. That um, making sure he's Waterford worthy, that's what we have to do. Um, and um, we are assured that um, he will um, lead the Mariners, um, both students and families, with both enthusiasm and a dedication to excellence. Thank you, board. I just want to say, uh, you're getting a high character guy. I lead with my heart. I'm a relational leader, so I, you know, I pride myself on knowing every kid's name by first name and correct pronunciation, and knowing my staff and knowing their backgrounds and their journeys. That's just what I'm about. So I have three little ones. So when they can get up there, they'll be running through the halls like it's their building when it's not. <laughs> um, but that's just who I am. I'm a dad first, educator, but I'm excited for this opportunity. I'm ready to just breathe some fresh energy into Mason, into the staff, into the students in that community, and I'm just grateful for this opportunity. 
Well, welcome. We've, uh, as, as I hope you've, you've inferred and deduced, we've got lots of exciting things happening in the Waterford School District, and uh, we're so happy that you can come join Team Waterford and yes, yeah. and do what you said you're going to do. Let's uh, let's 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 make sure that all that magic uh, can, is continuing over there at Mason because it's a it's a great school. Yeah. Absolutely. Did you did you say your kids go to school here no, in Waterford? No, so oh, okay. I live in Sterling Heights. That might be okay. the plan with my wife. She wants to always be close. <laughs> so eventually, she, she wants you to buy a house on a lake out here. Well, <laughs> I'm not there yet. <laughs> but uh, I have some little ones. So with the new uh, preschool opening up, that's that's very enticing to our family. But uh, yeah, in in time, in time. All right, yeah. we will welcome you with open arms. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. I appreciate that. Member Wagner, please. And just congratulations. We're very excited to have you join our team and our family. So welcome to our district. I think you'll be very amazed at how, what an amazing community this is and the families here and our students. So, so thank you. We're excited to have you. So looking yes. forward to it. Yeah. yeah and uh, we, we always make this invitation, but we love hearing from our building principals. Mm -hmm. So yes. don't be a stranger. No one seems to take us up on that often, <laughs> <don't know>. often <laughs> very often, but uh, don't be a stranger. Okay. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. Just going to get to see um, summer school yeah. at its, oh, uh, at its right. finest. Yep. Spreit's already in, introduced uh, and invited him into those classrooms oh, no. next oh, week. Oh, okay. Yep. Be there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Thank welcome, you. Staff. Yes, Thank you. welcome. I look forward to getting to know you so I can mess with you some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Again, we've got a great group here in Waterford. Lots of exciting things happening. Um, future is bright, as we say around here. So, Member Joslyn. Superintendent's recommendation 12-24-25, science curricular materials for biology, chemistry, and physics. It is recommended that the board approve the purchase of science curricular materials and digital licenses for high school biology, chemistry, and physics from SAVVAS for six years. The total cost is $211,390 with $154,270 paid by ESSER 3 and $57,120 to be paid by general funds. I so move. Support. Thank you. The motion has been moved and supported. Colleagues, what comments or questions do we have? I just, I just want to say that this is long overdue. We are almost done replacing everything in our high schools. And I, you know, thank you. I know you did a lot of work on this, Ms. Dixon, and we have needed this for so long and I am happy to approve. So Ms. Dixon, this does bring us up to, we've updated uh, all of our curriculum through our, our, our core subjects. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely, we have been able to update all of our core subjects, math, science, social studies, and language arts, we're in a very good place right now. Oh, so awesome. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Member Patricia, please. Uh, and again, the majority of it is being paid by the ESSER $3, uh, and some's coming out of our general fund. We have this all budgeted for, this all going that direction? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And the reason is we have, we could not use ESSER funds for the licenses, so we needed to budget okay, that so the, from general fund. Well, That's correct. We bought the microscopes or something. Is that what this is part of? No, the microscopes were all purchased from the ESSER funds. Okay. Good deal. <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe just as a reminder, again, for our, our a broader audience. Um, these ESSER funds have been uh, so instrumental in, in really doing some monumental work here in this district. And, and if any, if there's ever an argument for what equitable and increased funding can do for public schools, um, I hope these ESSER dollars. Um, and we have in our we have plenty of our documents up on our website where we have to, by law, detail how we spent those ESSER dollars. Mm -hmm. Look at them, I encourage everyone to, because they have followed our strategic plan and they have allowed us to really reshape the whole student experience here in Waterford. Um, and so it's been magical stuff. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And that's the, that extra money that we didn't have a few years ago when we were cutting, cutting, cutting. Now we have some money and then some extra money. And Again, like Julie said, we're getting back to where we should be. We're, yes. we're doing the things that shouldn't be getting done, that should have been done, but without money, you can't do anything. Absolutely. So, thank you for framing it. You're very welcome. Thank you. thank you. All right, all those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All right, excellent, motion carries. 
four zero. All right, colleagues, that takes us to the end of new business this evening. Um, thank you, everyone. We're now going to move on to public comments on non-action items this evening. I have one green card from one of our favorite visitors, Ms. Erin Asbell. Um, yeah, I don't really like the phone. I just to thank Well, I'm going to welcome them up here so that our listening audience at home. Our large, yeah. <laughs> our large listening audience. Oh, actually, my wife's up in my grandson's baseball <laughs> game, so she has to write out this thing. Okay, Erin Asdell, um, Waterford Senior Center, Waterford resident. I wanted to thank the Waterford School Board and Waterford School District uh, for 50 years of uh, oversight of the Waterford Senior Programs and for working closely with Waterford Township to facilitate a transition, which we are hoping will occur in uh, January 2024, uh, again, um, 28 years in the Waterford School District as an employee. I'm very proud to be part of Waterford Schools and very grateful for everything that has transpired in my tenure. So thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate that very much. Thank you. We appreciate your work, Aaron. Thank you. Uh -huh. you again, you've worked hard at it. You've, you've made... Yes, the, the fundraisers, the, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> when, when they talk about how it's, you know, well, it's self-funded, well, self-funded with a lot of work, a lot of dedications, a lot of volunteers, the fundraisers, the, again, it didn't just, you don't have ESSER dollars. You don't have this money growing in, oh, look, we can just use this, we can use this. You're, you're out there hitting the curb, getting the monies. It, it, you, you've done a... You've done a wonderful, wonderful job at that. Uh, again, I get goosebumps thinking about, I, I'm not able to participate in as much as I used to. I, I thought as I got older, I could you know, do things more. I don't have my kids. I can't do as much as I did 20 years ago with three boys running around. It's like, geez, we're, this is happening, that's happening. You, you forget things, you try to do it. Uh, but, but you've always been there and you've kept the doors open by fundraising. It isn't just money coming in. You you have been the, the head of that to fundraise, to be the spirit of that that group and to keep it going. And I truly appreciate you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Always. <laughs> All right. Is there anyone else who would like to speak to the board this evening? Okay. Excellent. Colleagues, Board of Education reports. What... Reports do we have this evening? Want to start? Please do. All right. So yesterday we had the pleasure of touring Camp WSD. I was able to tour the elementary camp with um, both um, Dr. Stitch and Member Donahue, and they were able to do the middle school so they can speak to that. But I have to say, it is such a phenomenal, phenomenal program, and our district does such a great job. Shout out to our curriculum team. I mean, we have some great teachers and our team putting that together. And it was really, really fun. And the students were so cute because we'd come into a classroom like, why are they here? <laughs> yes. But they, they were so cute. And it was really fun to see. It was also really cool to see the Promethean boards being used and to seeing how they interact with that. It was just, it really is a very unique, very cool way that our district does our summer school programs. The kids were excited to be there. I mean, it was just, I don't know. If anyone gets a chance to ever do that tour, I recommend it because it really gives you a good snapshot of what's going on and the kids are excited to be there. And it was really fun to see that they incorporated um, PE into it this year and that was phenomenal to see. And it was such a great like social emotional learning and just it was it, all around it was a really, really cool thing to be able to experience and I would um, I would recommend if you're ever considering if your children are in need of that or just it's a great program I think they said we had 380 students that had registered but with commitments and, and family stuff we ended up there's 333 elementary students that are attending as well as over 80 kids in child care in the same building so over 400 kids in that building in the summer and they it it's just, it's, it was very cool to witness. So, highly recommend it. Other board reports? 
Uh, Mr. Chief, please. Mention the uh, Parks and Rec millage. Uh, the Parks and Rec uh, Department's 10 year operation millage will be on the August 6th ballot for renewal and restoration. Uh, the millage is critical to the maintenance, operation, and future growth of parks and recreation department. It represents more than half of the revenues the department receives. The Parks and Recreation Department is a responsible for 16 parks and facilities in the township spanning more than 850 acres and offers more than 500 multi-generational programs every year. Uh, it's something that we need. Uh, without it, the, the, they don't have the money to clean the buildings and stuff. So it's just something that's important. Uh, we don't use them as much. I'd like to see the schools working more with Parks and Rec through the Rec programs. Uh, it used to be, when we, uh, a few years ago, girls basketballs, kind of girls were in the uh, quarterfinals or semifinals. And every one of those girls that were on the Kettering team had come up through the Parks and Rec program. It's just good to see, we, you start them young, we, we build them program. We have to get back to that to build our, I feel our high school teams back to where they should mm -hmm. be. So it's just something that's important and we need to work with them on building that up. So, you know, vote January or August 6th. I thought, you know, I could wait up until the August 6th meeting, but I've got people coming in talking to me. Well, who do I vote for here? What do I vote for? I forget about these mail ballots. Like, yep. You're filling them out now, <laughs> mailing yeah. them in. Yep. What happened to just the day of? The good old days. <laughs> oh, I'm getting old. Thank you, Member Patricia. I just, yeah, I just have something really quick. Um, so it's that time of year, one of her youth assistants is collecting shoes. Um, I didn't bring my notes with me, so if you wanna know why we collect shoes, it's a fundraiser, we've made a ton of money on it. They'll be doing Battle of the Badges this summer and Stuff the Trucks. There are boxes all over the community. Everybody, every year we seem to be participating more and more and more. And I know, I mean, I remember being a mom, this is the time of year where you go through the closets and you're like, oh my gosh, you have nothing that fits. So then you go buy them some clothes and then September comes and they look like floods. So, and their shoes don't fit. So go through those closets, um, drop them off. You can uh, participate in the Battle of the Badges if you want to represent the fire department or the police department, or the various uh, stuff the truck events, but they have it going on right now. You can check them out on Facebook or go to their website. The website gives you details on, you know, why they collect them, what they do with them once they receive them, um, and everything like that. So, thank you, Member Yep. Yeah, really quick to to echo Member Wagner's comments about our Camp WSD. Um, just a, an amazing, magical place. Um, I think it's important to note too, so this is a place where our students want to go. Many of them ask to go to summer school. Uh, what, a, what a thought. And, and this is also a, a time and a place where we get to, to think innovatively about mm -hmm. our, our approaches to teaching and learning. It's a sort of proving ground. Um, so we have these, these communities of teachers and paras and staff members um, who, who, who are willing to experiment and push the envelope to make sure that these kids have really great experiences. So it is a really great thing to witness. Um, and really quick, uh, we also have our middle school uh, experience, which is the same thing. So our sixth, or our fall sixth, fall seventh, yes. fall eighth graders, um, are there just having a really wonderful experience um, and, and, and the intentional planning and coordination, it is impressive and sets the bar high, um, frankly, mm -hmm. for what we should do during our, our regular academic year too. Um, so it is just something to behold. and. Uh, you know, it, Member Wagner spoke a little bit about the size and scope, and we were doing some rough math afterwards with uh, Ms. File, Ms. Dixon, and Member Donahue, and um, about 10 percent-ish, or 8 or 9 percent of our students are engaging in some sort of summer programming, because we've got 350-ish at elementary, 100, 120 at middle school, our extra school year, um, our credit recovery, I mean, so there are options um, for our students to make sure they're on track, they're excelling, they're accelerating, um, and that is just a, a testament to our district, our administrator's commitment to making sure our students on the, are on the right path. And two, it's important, to, again, we were chatting afterwards, so much of this, if not all of this, is grant funded. So this is almost like two districts, right, or two 
uh, operations operating in the same district. I mean, the size and scope, just to wrap your head around that. If we have a district of about 7,000 during the academic year, and we have a district of 500, 550 during the summer. Um, so, uh, and that includes feeding our students, trans uh, transporting our students, keeping them safe, keeping them active. It is impressive, uh, to say the least. Um, so thanks, Chris Sapor and Lauren Wiseman, Jessica Ristich, Devin McKee, our coordinators, our amazing CIA department, and our, of course, administrative colleagues uh, who help coordinate that work. Um, colleagues, you know, too, that with Superintendent Lindbergh's retirement, um, we've been in, in, in conversation about next steps, uh, and those conversations will be ongoing here for the next couple weeks as we begin to schedule, uh, communicate with our, um, each other, our administrative colleagues, certainly a big shout out to Megan Roberts, who just seems to know everything and all the time. Um, so uh, stay tuned um, and thank you so much for being flexible. I know it's tough to coordinate and chat. These are long conversations and it's tough. Uh, you know, we have jobs. And uh, it's, so thank you for being flexible and having those conversations. And I look forward to next steps. So. All right, colleagues, seeing no further business, tonight's meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much.